a chair Pilates class for you today, so we are going to be seated the entire time. We're going to need a chair without arms because at one point we will be in this position with our legs. So you just want a regular chair, no arms, and then you're also going to need a set of light hand weights, emphasis on light. So I have a set of two pound weights, each one is two pounds, and then I also have a lighter set. Um, each one of these balls is just one pound. I'm going to start with the twos, try to make it through with that, and then I have the ones if I need to drop down. If you don't have hand weights, you could use household objects, a pair of soup cans or bean cans, any canned food, that works, um, full water bottles work, or even just lacrosse balls. And at any point if the weights get to be too much, sorry if you can hear that siren outside, at any point if the weights um, get to be too much, you can always do body weight as well. So who is this class for? Basically anyone who wants to avoid weight bearing exercises on your feet for whatever reason that may be, maybe you have a sprained ankle, because um, we will be seated the whole time. Um, now often chair Pilates is directed towards people of a distinguished age. And if that describes you, this class may be perfect. It may though be a little too much. This is not an easy class. It's just all seated. Um, we definitely have challenging moves in there for the upper body. So I would just consult if you are um, working with an injury or a specific limitation, it's always good to check with your doctor or your personal trainer before doing a class. Um, now, I will do another chair Pilates class that is more on the gentle side, but again, we have some challenging sequences in here today. So it's all seated. It may be easy on the feet, but it is not necessarily easy in general. Okay, so let's get going. You're going to grab your weights, and we're going to make sure that we are in a neutral sitting position. So we're sitting on those sitting bones, upright and tall through the spine, and your feet are going to be about hips distance apart, and I want your heels under the knees. So notice if as we go throughout class, you have the tendency to walk your feet outward or cross them or shift them. We don't want that, okay? So they are parallel, planted down, heels under knees. And we're not leaning back against the back of our chair, okay? So you are away from it. We're gonna start with arms down by your side. If you have a wide chair, you might need to scoot forward a little bit so it's not in the way. And first, we're just gonna start with breath. We're gonna inhale through the nose. As you do, you expand through the rib cage, filling up your diaphragm, relaxing the pelvic floor. We exhale slowly out through the mouth like we're blowing out a birthday candle. Ribs move gently in and down. There's a bracing of the abdominal wall, a little lift to the pelvic floor. Keep going like that. Now we're gonna add in movement of the shoulders. We inhale just as we were doing. And now as you exhale, I want you to elevate the shoulders. So you're just gonna draw them up gently. And as you inhale, we're going to relax them down and let them hang heavy. Exhale, elevate. Inhale, lower with control and then let them hang heavy, coming into a slightly depressed state. One more. And then I just want you to bring those weights on to your thighs. So we're going to mobilize through the lumbar spine, the lower spine up next. As you inhale, we're gonna increase the arch of our lower spine, kind of tilting our hip bones towards our thighs. And then as we exhale, we're gonna reverse that. You're going to round back through the lower spine, almost like you're tucking your tailbone under, but it's not really glutes firing as we do this. It's more core. So I'm just gonna show you from the side. So as you exhale, it's that rounding back, focusing on the lower spine here. And as you inhale, it's that rolling forward. So we're coming through neutral into a flexed and extended state. So it's a little bit like twerking. I know it feels weird, <laughs> but lumbar spine mobility is important, especially if you've been sitting at a desk all day, this should feel really good to get some movement through here. I'm gonna turn back to face you. One more back, 
forward and let's settle and center right at neutral. Now I want you to bring your elbows up to a goal post position. Now we're going to focus on flexion extension through the mid and upper spine. So first, as you open up these elbows, I want you to open through the chest, gaze shift slightly up. We find a little bit of spinal extension. And then we're going to close the forearms in front of our face as we round it forward. Keep moving like that. We inhale open. Now our lumbar spine is staying fairly neutral. Okay, so this movement is coming mostly through the mid spine. Round that back forward. Inhale, open. It's like a cat cow variation. One more. And then I want you to stack the spine to neutral, elbows open at goal post. Now we're going to add in a little side bend. Make sure your feet are still planted in that neutral position. So let's start by pressing our right arm up overhead. And as we do, we're going to side bend just slightly up and over to the left. Bring it back into center and then other sides. So we're just going side to side. Think of growing tall and then side bending over. It's small. Length through the spine. Round it over. One more to either side. Last time, grow tall, open through that side body, bring it back to goal post. And now without flaring open through the rib cage, I want both arms to go up overhead and we're gonna do slow shoulder sweep. So it's kind of like you're making a snow angel. Your palms face forward, you lower the arms down in a sweeping motion and then you bring them back up. So we're getting upward and downward rotation of the scapula. So this warm-up is gonna take us right into upper body work. So as we get towards the end of this warm-up, we're gonna to start to build up a little bit of burn through the arms and the shoulders, and we'll just build off of that. So one more, we're gonna sweep it up. And then this time when we lower, only lower to shoulder height, okay? So we come down, we stop at shoulder height. Now from here, I want you to close the arms in like a chest fly. So you're making a circle with your arms and then open them back up. Now, as we open them back up, we're retracting the shoulder blades or they're gliding in towards each other. We're not changing the shape of our spine though, okay? So I don't wanna see an excessive arch to the lower back or a flaring open of the rib cage. I want you to focus on gliding your shoulder blades across the back of your rib cage. So we see the arms moving, but this arm movement is originating with the scapula, the shoulder blades on your mid back. Now, next time those arms go forward, I want you to pause and I want you to flip your palms down towards the floor. We're gonna do a spinal rotation. So starting by pulling your right elbow back, I want you to twist open to the right and then we come through center and do same thing other side. Now, I don't just want you to focus on pulling the elbow back. I want you to think of pushing the other knuckles forward. The twist is coming from your mid spine. So we've done flexion and extension of the spine. We've done lateral flexion with those side bends and now we're doing rotation. You're staying neutral through the pelvis so there's no shifting of the hips, mid spine and up, rotate. Let's do one more either side. Hopefully you're feeling the arms a little bit now because this is taking us right into our upper body work. Come through center and pause. Now from here, it's just going to be the, a little pulse of the arms. And as you pulse them, I want you to start bringing them wider, wider, wider. When they're in a wide V shape, I want you to pause and I want you to flip the palms up towards the ceiling. Little pulses close. And we're just gonna keep going like that. So shoulders and biceps working. When they're in front of you, pause, palms to the floor. Little pulse, open. Flip the palms. Pulse them closed. Twice more. We're gonna add in a hinge of the upper body. And we're gonna focus on our mid back as we continue to work arms. Now, next time your arms are wide, I'm gonna have you pause with those arms out wide. Now, I want you to rotate, so thumbs up, palms forward. I want you to bend the elbows, bring those weights into your chest and we're going to hinge at the hips. So keeping your spine neutral, we're gonna tilt forward, chest towards your thighs, but without rounding forward, and then come up. So we're giving our arms a little breather before we focus on the back. 
coming up and we'll do it in a hinge position. So to show you from the side, this is what I'm doing. I'm staying neutral through my spine so it doesn't have to be a huge hinge. As soon as you start to round, you've come forward too far. So it's not this, it's not flexion of the spine, it's hinging at the hips. Forward, stay open through the chest, connected to your mid back and up, keep that going. Now we're gonna hold in the hinge position up next. We're gonna hit mid back, we're gonna hit triceps, we'll still be feeling shoulders. I want you to hinge forward next time and I want you to pause. Now from here, you're just gonna open your arms back out wide and we're gonna go into a reverse fly. So you lower the arms down by your side and then we fly them open. Now, same thing we were talking about earlier. We're seeing the arms moving. Where is the movement originating from though? The arms, if you think about it, sort of attached to our mid back via the shoulder blades, the scapula. So we're thinking about the shoulder blades gliding in towards each other, retracting as the arms go wide. Now I want you to notice as you open the arms wide, are you jutting your neck forward? That's unnecessary movement and recruitment of those neck muscles. So we wanna maintain length through the back of the neck. Now you absolutely are gonna feel this kind of at the base of your neck because we're working the posterior chain, but we shouldn't be moving or nodding that head forward and back. I recommend exhaling as you open the arms, think breath first, feel that bracing through your abdominal wall, then move the arms. Two more and then we're gonna hold them wide. Next time you fly those arms wide, I want you to pause. Make sure there's length through your spine and just give me a little pulse, little pulse. Keeping them pretty high. You retract through the scapula, open, open. Maintain the connection to your core so there's no flaring open through the ribs. Give me four, pulse three, arms lower in two and one. Stay in your hinge, lower the arms down by your side. Now rotate so the palms face in towards the chair wide row, you're gonna bend the elbows back and wide, and then you lower those weights back down. So same deal, we're focusing on the retraction of the scapula, just a different movement. So big challenge here for the spinal erectors, all those little muscles that run up and down our spine, the entire length of it really, and help maintain upright posture. We are challenging that. Now, the more you lean forward, the more you're gonna have to work against gravity. Coming up a little higher at less of an angle will make it a little easier for those spinal erectors, but I want you to stay in whatever range of motion helps you maintain a neutral spine, okay? No rounding. Next time you row up and back, you're gonna pause for me and just give me a little pulse, pulling back, back. We're gonna hold the elbows back and now we're going to recruit the triceps, kicking those arms straight in eight, pulse seven, six, five, four, three, two, pulse and hold those elbows back and wide. And now I just want you to kick those arms straight and then bend. So the movement is coming from the elbow. Reaching those arms back. They're kind of wide and back at an angle. Using the backs of the arms, those triceps to create the movement. <sighs> Stay open through the chest. <sighs> we have one more variation to get through. <sighs> We're gonna hold the arms straight in three, in two. Next time you kick those arms straight, hold them straight and just give me a little pulse up of those arms. Pulse up, pulse up. Weights are gonna come into our chest. We go back to our hinge. We start from the top in eight, seven, six, five, four arms straight, three, you got it, two, one. Bend at the elbows, bring the hands in towards your chest. We come upright with the torso, woo, and then we hinge forward. Okay, so the upper body gets to breathe a little bit of a sigh of relief while we focus on our hinging motion forward and upright. We are going to go through that whole thing one more time. It's gonna be quicker though. We're not gonna spend as much time on each of the movements. You know the sequence, so you know what to expect. This is our little chance to reset. Weights at our chest, upright, and hinge. Okay, next time you hinge forward, hold, length through the spine, engage the abdominal wall, and let's straighten those arms out, and we go into our fly, lowering the arms down by our side, 
and reverse fly opening up. Last bit of work in a hinged position. Two more and then we go into our pulses. Next time you fly those arms up and wide, little pulse at the top. Fly back, back. Use your breath to stay connected to your core. Give me four, give me three, give me two. Lower the arms with control, rotate palms face in towards your chair, wide row, elbows drop up wide and back. You might feel like range of motion is a little limited on this one, keep going, but it's not like when we do a row with the palms facing in and we can really get those elbows far back. A wide row like this might feel like a smaller movement and that is fine. Next time you row back, take it into your pulse. A little pulse at the top, row pulse. We pull, we pull. We keep the elbows lifted, triceps in four, three, two, one. Kick those arms out wide and bend. You got it. We are almost done with this sequence. We're going to shift the focus into obliques, although shoulders will still have to work. Sorry. Kick them back straight and hold. Straight arm pulses up, up and back. Eight, seven, Six, five, give me four, three, two, one. Lower the weights, come up right through the spine. Take a couple deep breaths here, rolling out through the shoulders. Ugh, awesome job. Switch direction of those circles. So here's the deal. We're gonna come into some oblique work up next. We're gonna keep one weight in each hand. But if after that previous section, your arms have kind of had enough, then I would put one weight down. And when we do our windmill, I would just hold the weight in your bottom hand and just go body weight with the top arm, okay? That is an option you can take at any time. So I want you to mirror me. I want you to keep your right foot exactly as it is. And then we're gonna open up our left leg at about a 45 degree angle. We're gonna do pretty much a windmill variation like we do standing, only seated. Now your left hand that has the weight, it's gonna be behind your leg. And the right hand is going to reach up and we're gonna look at it. Now we are open through the chest. We're gonna do a windmill, so we're going to tilt over to the left. And as we do, you're gonna rotate through your mid spine, okay? So we're going to side bend, look up at that top weight. And then as you exhale, you're gonna to engage to the right side obliques to bring yourself back upright and forward. So look, my chest is facing you. And now it's rotating slightly up towards the ceiling. It's a very small movement. So mirror me, let's go. I want you to think more rotation and less side bend, okay? So it's not this, it's not lateral flexion, although we will do that. It's more rotation and almost a hinge to the side. <sighs> Inhale, lower, rotate, look up at that weight. Exhale, connect to your obliques, bring yourself upright, rotate back parallel. If holding the weight in your top arm is too much for this right shoulder after the work we just did, then just stitch this weight, okay? Now we're gonna keep doing this exact same thing, but we're gonna add in a serve the platter with our left arm. So next time you come upright, I want you to pause and then just bend your left elbow like a bicep curl. Now, as we do the exact same thing with the torso, I just want you to reach your left arm forward. So our arms are kind of in an L shape and then bend the elbow, pull it back in as you come upright. So you're mirroring me, it's that tight rotation as we win, you'll extend that bottom arm and pull it back in. Our lower body is stabilizing us. So while we don't have much weight in the feet, we're not letting the knees wobble. We're staying firmly planted. So coming up, we are going to hold in our side bend position and in this serve the platter, ditch the weights at any time if you need to. Twice more. Come into your windmill and hold at the bottom. Now we're gonna stay in this kind of side bend, but we're gonna rotate our chest parallel, bringing this top right arm level with the left. So on an exhale, I want you to square off towards me, stay in your side bend, bring the arms parallel. 
And now let's just rotate back open, right arm to the ceiling. So we're opening and closing. Now, as you do this, notice, is there, is there an excessive arch to your lower spine? You need to stay engaged through your core so that we're not rocking through the pelvis. We are neutral through the pelvis, upright on those sitting bones. We open. Square it off. Now, next time you square it off, you're gonna hold so you will be facing me. We're in this side bend, hold here. Now, maybe you stay here. If you wanna advance it, you're gonna take your left arm and you're gonna reach it overhead. Ooh, a little harder for the right obliques to stabilize. If you wanna advance it even further, you take the right arm overhead as well. So we are open through the chest, we're in the side bend position. Now, keeping the arms overhead, if possible, we are going to come into a side bend, so think mermaid as you exhale. Let's bring ourselves upright. So there's no more of that rotation. Now we're doing lateral flexion, side bending, and bringing ourselves upright. Now you have options with the arms. Both arms overhead is going to be most advanced. Bring one arm in to tone it down a notch. Bring both arms in for the most modified version, okay? Side bending over, exhale, use your breath to connect to the side body and drag yourself upright. You have just one more hold to get through and then we're done on this side and we'll take it over to the other side. Now I want your neck following the line of your thoracic spine so you're not bringing your ear down towards your shoulder. Two more and then we hold. Now next time we have our final side bend. So you're going to side bend over and you're going to hold. If both weights over weight, overhead is too much, bring one or both arms in. Elongate. Maybe you get a little lower here for four, three, two, one. Bring it upright. Lower those weights. Oh, you can give me some shoulder shrugs. All right, so we're going to do that same thing over on the other side. So let's square off through the legs. Upright, neutral through the pelvis and spine. Now your left foot stays planted, pointed forward, and we step our right foot out at that 45 degree angle. The right arm is gonna start just hanging down. That should feel nice after what we just did. And we're going to bring the left arm up overhead. So we're gonna start with that windmill. And again, the windmill is more a rotation than a side bend. So almost just think hinge and rotate more so than lateral flexion. All right, let's go. As you windmill, you look up at that weight. Exhale come upright. So my chest is pointing towards the camera. My chest is pointing up slightly towards the ceiling. It's a small controlled movement, all right? The movement is originating from our mid spine. And the neck, the cervical spine, is just following along with whatever the mid spine does. Three more like this, then we're going to add in the serve the platter. Last time, then we'll pause at the top. Pause. Now I want you to bend that right elbow, palm faces up. So now as we do this, we're going to extend the right arm forward. So you go into that windmill, right arm reaches forward. So your arms are kind of in this L shape. And then we come back up. Stay neutral through the pelvis. So plant down firmly through those feet. You might notice a gentle engagement through the glutes helps stabilize the pelvis. Rotation. Really think about the movement, all right? Don't just go through the motions. Twice more and then we hold in that side bend. Or I guess it's not a side bend, it's more of the windmill, but we'll come into the side bend. All right, next time you go over, you're going to pause. Now, bottom hand stays where it is. As we square our chest towards the mirror, staying in the side bend, we close down with our top left arm and we rotate open. So 
So we are not completely upright through the spine. We're tilted over to the right. And then within this tilt, we are rotating open and squaring off. Woo! We are almost done with upper body. We shift the focus into legs after this. Give me one more and then we're gonna hold in the side bend with the arms kind of parallel. Ready? Hold in the side bend. Now maybe you stay here. Maybe one arm goes overhead. Even harder, both arms go overhead. We're gonna come into a side bend. Maybe arms stay like this in three, two. On an exhale, engage through your left side obliques. Use them to drag yourself upright. Length through the spine and we side bend. So it's like a mermaid. Stable through the base. Okay, so I shouldn't see wobbling of the knees. Now, if this is too much, you bring one arm into your center of gravity and you just do it with one arm extended. Either bottom or top arm doesn't matter. If you need to tone it down even more, you have both weights in at heart center and you just focus on that lateral flexion up to you, okay? We have one more hold to get through. Now, try not to lean forward or back as you do this. You're moving straight to the side. One more full rep and then we hold over. All right, we have our final hold. Let's go side bend over and breathe. Try to keep both hips down on the seat. So don't let this left hip peel up. You're here for three, a little lower. Two, one, exhale, bring yourself upright. Lower the weights. Awesome job, you can give me some shoulder shrugs. Okay, so let's bring those legs back parallel. We're gonna shift the focus into lower body. We're gonna do some hip flexor and quad work. Now I'm gonna turn my chair to the side um, just cause I think it's gonna give you all a better angle for this. So here's the deal as we come into this hip flexor and quad work. We're gonna have the weights resting on our thighs. The closer to your knees, the heavier. Closer to your groin, the lighter. And you can always ditch the weights if necessary, okay? Now our goal here is to really challenge the connection between our hip flexors and our core and maintain an upright posture as we move the legs. Now you might find yourself wanting to lean back. It's not the end of the world if you do. I will probably be leaning back a little by the end. But what I don't want you to do, and I want, what I want you to be mindful of, is I don't want you to scoop back like this. Notice I'm rounded, I'm scooped and tucked under. I want you to stay neutral. So if you need to hinge back a little, that's okay. Try not to round back. All right, we're gonna start on the right leg. So our left foot is just going to stay down planted firmly. We're on those sitting bones upright away from the back. We're just gonna start with a march of the right leg. So as you exhale, you're gonna first feel that bracing of your abdominal wall, and then we fire through the hip flexors and we march up through that right leg and then we lower it down. Exhale, lift and lower. Now, as you do this, try not to shift your weight over to the left or shift it back. So don't worry how high up you're getting that knee. We're gonna turn this into a combo up next. We're gonna lift, we're gonna kick straight, and then we'll just reverse. Let's take it to that combo. Exhale, lift, kick straight, firing through your quads, bend, and then lower. So what you might have to do is scoot a little farther forward on your chair, because what I don't want to happen is when you straighten the leg, I don't want you resting the thigh down on your chair. I want it at a hover, if possible, okay? If it's not possible, do what you gotta do. A little support from your chair seat is okay. So you might find that you don't need the weight at all. In that case, just put both weights on your left leg as you focus on the right. Constantly checking in, don't tuck under through that tailbone. Now I know that this work is very challenging, especially if you're someone who spends a lot of time seated, maybe you have a desk job. If that is the case, we tend to have shortened and weaker hip flexors, myself included. So this type of work, while very important, is very hard. One more full combo and then we're gonna hold with that leg straight. 
All right, next time you straighten that leg, I want you to hold it straight and it's a little pulse up and down, lifting and lowering. Lift on the exhale, upright through the spine, really fire through the quads, stretch the leg long. Give me eight, seven, six, five. Oh, mine's getting lower. Four, three, two, one. Bend the knee, replace your foot to the floor. Let's reset before we do the other side. Oh, that was hard. All right, so we're gonna switch it over to the left and we're just gonna do that march. Neutral through the pelvis, upright through the spine. Again, weights farther away, harder, closer to your groin, a little easier. Let's go, exhale, think breath first, feel the brace to your core, then fire through the hip flexors. There is no shifting through the rest of your body as the leg lifts and lowers. So notice, are you crunching into one side of your waist? Try not to do that. That is a sign that you are shifting away from the movement. We'll turn it into that combo coming up. Lift, kick straight, bend and lower. Let's go. Exhale, march it. Straighten the leg. Bend, replace the foot to the floor. So ideally, when you kick the leg straight, there's no change in height. So whatever height the knee is at when it's bent, you maintain that height as the leg straightens. Ooh, I can barely do it. You may notice that the leg wants to lower as it straightens, and that's okay. We're working towards keeping the knee at the same height, but if it's not there quite yet, A-okay. Really try to get the leg all the way straight, okay? So you fire through the quads, straighten, bend. Little check-in, are you starting to lean back? Upright. One more full combo and then we hold the legs straight. Next time that leg goes straight, we hold. Hold it straight and it's a little lift up and down. I'm gonna move the weight closer to my groin so it's a little less intense. Really fire through the quads to hold the legs straight. You pulse up eight, seven, don't tuck the tailbone, five, give me four, Three, almost there, it's two, one, bend at the knee, replace the foot, whoo. All right, so we're gonna elevate the challenge to our core to maintain upright as we do those same motions, but we'll just alternate side to side, okay? So you can go weights or no weights, but I want the arms overhead. We're connected to our core, so you're not flaring open to the rib cage and you're not arching into your lower back like that. We're just gonna alternate our march. So as you exhale, right knee marches and lowers and over to the left. With the arms overhead, we're just increasing the challenge to our deep stabilizing core muscles, that transverse abdominis. Go slow, you're moving with your breath, marching on the exhale, lowering on the inhale. Let's take it to our combo coming up, okay? So you march, you kick straight, you lower, let's go. Exhale, lift. Kick straight, bend, replace, other leg, lifts, kick straight, it bends and lowers, keep going. If it's too much with the arms overhead, I want you to have weights on your shoulders, okay? Just like this. Twice more each side. Just one more each leg. Replace both feet, 
weights, weight come down, weights come back down to the thighs. All right, so we are winding down this class. I just want us to kind of counter the hip flexor and quad work we did by firing through the hip extensors, the glutes and hamstrings. Now, if you are doing this chair class because uh, you have an injury to your foot, then you may or may not be able to do this last part, okay? We're not increasing weight on our feet at all. We're staying seated, but we are gonna think about pushing the foot down so that we fire through the glutes and hamstrings, okay? So you may skip this last part if you are working with a bad foot injury. So once again, we are making sure we're sitting upright and I want us to start with the right side. All you're going to do is pretend you're pushing the floor away with that right side. And as you push the right foot down, you should feel your hamstrings and glutes light up and then you just relax. So you're basically, without really moving, you're just squeezing, activating through those hip extensors and then releasing. So you might even notice as the glutes and the hamstrings contract that you kind of lift up a little bit because the muscles are tight and contracted and then you relax and you kind of sit back down. So think just push the foot into the floor, clenching your glutes and hamstrings basically on that right side. So this is bringing us into our cool down. One more this side, then we just take it over to the left. Now we're going to take it over to the left. So you push your left foot down towards the floor without actually moving it. And as you do, as you do that pushing motion, you should feel your glutes and the backs of your legs fire up. So think of pushing the heel down. If you're having, if you're only feeling the back of your leg and you're not feeling your glutes, think heel pushes down. The whole foot is on the floor, but if you drive through the heel, that can help get uh, glutes to fire along the back of the leg. And now let's alternate, okay? So you're gonna push right, relax, left, relax. So it's so small, you might not even see it, but you might notice me kind of rocking side to side just a little bit as the muscles physically change shape as they contract and kind of push me up off my seat a little bit. We're gonna finish by just doing both together. So you'll push down both right and left foot towards the floor, contracting those hip extensors. Let's go. Push down through both feet. Can you fire through the backs of the legs? You're basically just clenching your glutes and hamstrings and then releasing them. Then push your feet down into the floor without actually moving and relax. So it's a little funky, right? We're not moving, but we're still getting those muscles to fire without increasing the weight load at all. We're gonna finish with a hold. So next time you press down through those feet and you feel those extensors contract, I just want you to hold it like that and breathe. So we're very active through the glutes and hamstrings. Picture you're pushing the floor away, pushing the floor away. It doesn't look like anything, but hopefully you are feeling it. You might even feel a little shaky as we maintain this isometric hold. We're gonna cool it down in four, keep pushing, keep pushing, in three, in two, one, I want you to relax. So I'm just gonna turn my chair to face you. You don't have to. We're gonna come into a cool down. You can put those weights on the floor and let's find a nice wide stance with our feet. So kind of a sumo squat position, one hand on either thigh. We're just gonna dip one shoulder down, twisting side to side, opposite shoulder down to the floor. One more to either side. And then if mobility allows, we're gonna bring your hands to the floor in the center and we're gonna plant down through our right hand and we're gonna peel that left open up to the ceiling coming into a twist. We're gonna straighten the arm. Maybe you stay here. Maybe you bring the arm behind your back for a nice opening through the shoulders and the chest. And then coming through center, we're gonna switch over to the other side. Left hand plants, pull the right elbow up, then maybe straighten the arm, maybe stay here, maybe take that kind of bind position, bringing the hand behind your back. Coming through center, you can grab opposite elbow with opposite hand, just hang heavy here, nod your head yes and no, release any tension from the neck. 
open them, bringing your hands to the floor. Heel toe your feet in. Vertebrae by vertebrae. Let's stack the spine up tall. Let's finish with one deep breath together. We inhale, the arms sweep up. We exhale, release. And that is your class. Awesome work today. Again, I'm going to put together another chair Pilates class that is on the gentler side, um, because even though this was all seated, we definitely had some tough moments in there. At least I was feeling it at times. Um, hope you enjoyed that. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel. You know the drill. I appreciate the support and I'll see you next time.